Uh, but that's the series that we're sticking with the AI zero to one series. The first one in them is actually to uh, is a sample that we like to call building a compliance checker. Um, it works in Copilot out of the box because it is a Teams messaging extension uh, and it uses Azure OpenAI. So it's a long title, but it's trying to capture everything that the sample does. Uh, and I hope we've uh, we can do some uh, amount of justice to it. So I'll actually move on to. Uh, just give you an introduction and share some context about what these samples are, why we build these samples, et cetera. So uh, we've actually built six pro code samples that cover some repeat scenarios that we thought would help the community and would help developers across the world actually make that step from zero to one, get their hands dirty in Copilot. Um, and these are really not designed to be full fledged plug and play solutions, but essentially uh, these are some things that you can take as a point to get started. You can take the outputs of these that Copilot gives you or plug them into any other line of business uh, solution of your choice. But essentially, we've tried to cover a wide variety, like uh, you know, uh, demonstrating um, re retrieval augmented generation or RAG. Uh, it's, a, it's a big and important part of how AI functions. Uh, so there is a demo for that coming up soon as well. Uh, Multi-parameter queries, we've tried to cover how to filter out actions and summarization, and also how to use intent capture to actually uh, call child bots if you have a parent bot simply with the power of AI and identifying intent. So the idea for these samples is basically for you to get inspired as a community to innovate with some of with some robust examples. Not all of them are co-pilot, uh, so some of them, uh, but all of them are AI, right? Uh, and we actually identified a a white space in pro code solution samples, and we tried to use this as a plug for those. These aren't really, like I said, plug and play solutions. But they're great ways to get started. They're great ways to look at some of our ready-made cookie cutter samples that we have, and then possibly uh, just get started from there on. So that should hopefully give you a quick idea of what these samples are. Like I said, we have six of these developed. The first one is the compliance checker. This is the sample for the day. Um, apart from this, we have an AI meeting assistant bot. And what this does is it actually does what the regular out-of-the-box copilot does. It, it creates meeting notes, creates action items, but then it spits us out for you, for you to actually go and input into another line of business solution of your choice. So maybe Todo or Jira or Confluence or wherever you tack notes or summarize uh, your, your meetings and uh, knowledge transfers and everything. Then we have the retrieval augmented generation demonstrator. This is something that you can use as an API. Uh, just plug in your prompt later on and just run it from a browser and it'll actually work. But the cool thing is it actually shows you how vector embeddings are actually created and stored in like a database of your choice, in this case, Azure Cosmos. Then we have a virtual assistant superbot. Like I said, this demonstrates the superbot parent bot uh, child bot concept. So if you have a superbot that recognizes intent, can it actually call some bots based on that intent? Uh, finally, one of the big things that we actually realize is that people get confused or struggle how to do SSO with Copilot. So there's an expert finder bot that has SSO along uh, that actually demos SSO with Copilot. And lastly. The company communicator is back, but this time an AI powered version of the company communicator. The author app is something that we've tried to AI fi uh, and we've tried to use different calls and uh, you know convert into a sample that hopefully you all can use and derive value from. Um, so I think with that, I'll uh, actually just quickly switch off my camera so the feed is better and I make good use of my limited bandwidth and I'll move on. The sample for the day is the compliance checker. So what does the sample do? Well, it actually takes a proposal uh, document. Uh, that you might receive hundreds of when you actually put out a request for proposal or if you actually put out a guideline document. So we've used the term guideline, which is the base document, which is which has got all of the terms that, let's say, your imaginary suppliers of an imaginary company called Northwind, for example, may uh, want to submit proposals for. So there is a guideline document, and then there's lots of proposals that you're getting. You have to compare each proposal to see, does it actually comply with the, with the guideline that I put out or not? Um, and what this does is this uses Azure OpenAI to, uh, do, to do that comparison. We make two calls to Azure OpenAI and we'll walk you through both of those. What are the prompts that we've used there? Uh, and then what it does is uh, it, it spits out a neat little adaptive card, which is what messaging extensions um, in Teams were. And we'll, we'll talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, and the output is very neatly displayed within Copilot if you use it within Copilot. Um, and that was the intent of this, this whole demo, right? So. A little bit of history actually is required here about why we're talking about these messaging extension based apps. So when Copilot came out, one of the easiest ways for us to extend Copilot was to actually take ready-made Teams messaging extension applications and 
make those readable or make those uh, usable within Copilot. And this is exactly where that sample is. And what I really want to show you is that this is a standard, a box standard cookie cutter Teams messaging extension sample. Um, I'd love to go into more detail of this, but I will, I will shortly take you to GitHub. But sadly, we can't go into messaging extensions, but there is a resources link that you can go into later. But what I want to show you is that these messaging extensions also can ready made work within Copilot. And that is really the basis of where extensibility within Copilot stems from or AI within Copilot starts from. So if you have a messaging extension based app, bring it into Teams, it will automatically be usable by Copilot with some minor tweaks. Uh, and we'll go into uh, all of that. Um, if you do use it within Copilot, of course, you will require a license. Uh, and then uh, we're using a model that we deployed on Azure OpenAI. And um, yeah, I've just put some industry applicability uh, examples and how can we extend this further, right? So like I said, these are solution samples. The output is yours to play with. The output is yours to run with. So here's a quick video. I will actually not, uh, I'll actually play this video twice. But what I want you to see here is uh, how do we use it within Copilot, right? So I'm going to extend this to the point where I open Copilot. Uh, then what I do is I actually toggle this on because it is an extension that I use within Copilot. Uh, and you should be able to do this for any messaging extension based app that is compatible with Copilot. So I've told Copilot, hey, Copilot, using Compliance Checker, can you evaluate Acme's proposal for compliance? Now, notice that I actually didn't specify the name of the guideline document. That's because we've hard coded it for simplicity's sake, and I'll walk you through that code as well. But Copilot goes away, does its magic, and it's saying, oh, you know what? Um, yeah, let me do that. Let me go and uh, look at uh, uh, whether the Acme Supplies proposal complies or not. And now what it's done is it's actually gone com and compared all of the different points. Uh, you know, is, is uh, Acme, does it have ethical sourcing? Does it meet my confidentiality requirements, my minimum order quantities, my audit and inspection? rights, my quality control, etc. And then it actually also produces the messaging extension uh, adaptive card right below. And that's such a neat way of doing this, right? I love that you can actually do this ready-made. Um, so it's got, it, it actually gives me a summary and it says, hey, you know what? It It's passed four out of the seven compliances, uh, the compliance checklists, uh, the compliance checklist that you told me to check against. And here's the result. Here's the output of that along with the adaptive card. That's beautiful. So what we'll do is uh, we'll come back to this video. We'll see it in some more detail because I just wanted to show you Here's what we've built. Now here's the code that I want to walk you through. Uh, and then we can come back to this video. So with that, I will actually go and try to find the right screen, which is this one. And let me just present, uh, present this. So the links for all of this will be put into GitHub. I actually just created an ak.ms link because I look at uh, I looked at the meeting chat and I realized I don't have an ak.ms link, so I panicked and I went and I created one. Uh, but this is the uh, the the sample that we're talking about today. And what I'll actually do uh, with the sample is, uh, you know, we'll do a quick gloss over, more like a whistle stop tour of the inner workings of these samples. Um, and the first thing that we'll actually do is we will uh, go into uh, the app package and then the manifest, right? Because this is where all of the goodness is. This is a really standard manifest for every team's app, but what I want to go into is the compose extensions piece. And within these compose extensions, in order to make sure that these your, your samples work with Copilot, what we've done is we've defined a query, uh, which is a search query. Um, these, this is one of the type of a messaging extensions. The other one's an action messaging extension. This one's a search messaging uh, extension. Uh, and what we've done is we've actually um, defined this within the Compose extensions piece. We've, we've uh, given it the context that it can be available within, and we've defined two parameters. The first parameter is the proposal document, and the second parameter is the policy guideline document. Um, and that's just it. We've given it a quick description saying what, is, what, are, what are each of these, and the rest of it is literally a standard, um, a standard manifest. So with that out of the way, I think what we will do is uh, we'll go into the source code. And our first stop is uh, the AI client.js. Now this is where things move slightly uh, tangentially when it comes to these AI samples, but I will literally do my best to show you how this is absolutely super, super, super simple. Um, and what we will do is the first function that I've actually defined in this file is a function that prepares my checklist. Um, 
Now there are two functions here. Both of these functions make individual calls to Azure OpenAI. Now, as part of this, what I do is, uh, you know, I know what my guideline document looks like. That is something that I publish once. Um, so I've cheated here a little bit, and what I've told, uh, what I've defined as a system prompt, and this is the prompt that I sent to Azure OpenAI. I told, hey, pick out seven primary checklist items um, because I know that there are seven different parameters that I want to evaluate every proposal against, and always, always, always give examples, right? So you notice over here, I've actually given it two examples, and I've said, here's what a sample uh, checklist item could constitute a payment term, a quality standard, et cetera. And then um, I've gone and created that call to Azure OpenAI and uh, it'll come back with a nice little result for me. Now, the second part of the call that I make is the call where the compliance is actually checked. And these are the two parts where you can see intelligence is used. Um, the second part of the, the, the second call that I make here is the call that uh, is the call where I actually tell Azure OpenAI, hey, you are an expert in assessing and comparing contracts and contractual terms. You must now compare the proposal that uh, I receive with the policy guideline and then make a decision on whether each one of them meets or fails compliance. So that is the gist of this system prompt that I've given it. But you can see it's quite a long prompt, right? And uh, it's it's actually something that we uh, stumble upon after a lot of trial and error. And again, you can see that I've told it, you know, smaller or larger need not always mean compliant because a 45 day notice period um, uh, uh, may be better than a 30 day notice period, but in some cases that that, that may not also mean uh, that it is compliant. And I've also instructed it on how to give its output. So I've said for each item on the checklist, if the proposal complies, do this. If the proposal does not comply, do this. So it's a great example for you to actually reference and look at. Um, and one last thing that I want to touch on here is, uh, you know, while we um, actually make uh, this this call to uh, this call to Azure OpenAI. Um, what I wanted to show you was these two parameters. There's a parameter called temperature and top P, and this is really AI heavy. But a quick lowdown on what temperature and top P is. So temperature, the higher temperature is, the more randomness or liberty my AI response will have. And top P again is a measure of the variety of the words that my AI model is allowed to play with. So notice the range for these is zero to one. My temperature is low, but my top P is high. And why I did that combination is because I want logically consistent and predictable answers every single time. So you can play around with these when you make a call to Azure OpenAI. It's a fairly simple call to Azure OpenAI, but these two parameters I really, really strongly wanted to call out. So now that we're done with this, I will actually go to the last stop of our tour. Uh, and that is the search app.js, which is where uh, messaging extensions within Teams are usually handled. So if you look at the description here, this is again very box standard. Uh, and what I've done here is I've actually, uh, you know, I'll walk through it sequentially. So the first part of uh, my sample, what it does is it actually goes to Azure Blob Storage, which is where my documents for the sample are stored. You do not have to store them there. You can have any source that you want, SharePoint, OneDrive, any other database of your choice. But I decided to put them in Azure Blob Storage. Like I said, I cheated a little bit. I've hard coded the source document, but I have actually had to specify the name of every single proposal document that I receive um, as an argument or as a parameter in my messaging extension. So the first part, what it does is it actually allows me to handle PDF document or TXT files. It reads all of the files in my document, all of the proposal documents, which I'm going to dump into Azure uh, Blob Storage. Um, I've written some code to actually handle or process those files. And uh, after that, um, I've uh, basically gone and written some code to actually go and create all my checklist items. Uh, and once those checklist items are created, um, you know, uh, there is, uh, 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 we make uh, multiple calls to actually process each of those checklist items. So in this case, I told Cope, uh, Azure OpenAI to give me seven different checklist items, uh, but there is some code to actually go and handle or break each one of those seven different uh, items to check for compliance. And then lastly, after I have made the required calls, I will actually generate an adaptive card. And this is for the output that I get. You saw that neat little output that I got where I could show every single result as being yes, no, in terms of compliant, non-compliant, uh, just to beautify that that, that output a little bit uh, is what I have done as part of uh, my search app.js. Uh, and um, yeah, I think that pretty much talks about what the sample is uh, largely um, overall. Um, everything else is quite standard when it comes to uh, the app itself. We've also included a demo manifest, and this demo manifest should be something that you can go download, sideload into Teams, and just start exploring or experimenting with right away. Okay. Um, we've also tried to do a good enough job of uh, of specifying, uh, you know, a README that has all of the different details in it. Um, I'll put a link to this in the chat window, actually. But yes, uh, I think overall. Um, Overall, this is what we've tried to try to do, try to achieve with the sample. Strongly hope you find it useful. 
I will go back to my presentation and just play that video and show you the messaging extension experience also one last time for a handed over to Visa. I do not know how I'm doing with time. I so wish I had uh, I had uh, the prompt uh, to prepare for community calls last week. But yeah, uh, I'll quickly glance through this. So again, um, what I'm trying to do here as part of this video is, uh, you know, we we are trying to upload this app package. Uh, again, the demo manifest you can use to upload it. And once it has been uploaded, um, I can actually add it as a uh, messaging extension. So you click the plus button. I can click on get more apps because I've installed this app. Uh, I can go and add compliance checker. Now here, what I do is I actually have to specify the name of only the proposal document because my guideline is hard coded. So once I specify the name of that uh, of that document, um, the messaging extension goes away. It makes all of those calls. This is the single parameter that it can accept, and it actually gives me this neat little adaptive card. And this adaptive card is then something that I can use across teams, across channels, etc. Now, what I want to show you is how easy it is to actually use this within Copilot, right? Um, this is the easiest way to extensibility, and that's why we're showing you this this sample. Um, just toggle on Compliance Checker. It should be available if you programmed your manifest the way that I showed you. And once that is available, I can just ask Copilot and say, uh, I can provide it that same document's name and I can ask it to check for compliance. And uh, yeah, just recapping what I did last time, it'll it'll go and stream the responses and it'll say, is this compliant? Is this non-compliant? Why is it compliant? Why is it non-compliant? And these were all of the calls that we made to Azure OpenAI. The two calls that we made to Azure OpenAI do all of this goodness and all of this magic for us. Mm -hmm.